Political cultured stepdad says that my standards are too high and unrealistic when responded to my reasons for not supporting Trump. I didn't know how to respond to this. How should I have responded? You should have responded that absolutely your standards are high and for the world in which we live in right now are unrealistic, but you are fighting for them to become a reality because you believe there is a world out there. There is a world out there in which your views will be not just realistic, but practical and enforceable, you know, practical in the sense that they would be applied right now, right here. And that you will not settle. You're not going to go into the sewers because right now you can't climb to the height of the skyscraper. The fact that you're an idealist, that you have ideals, that are not realizable right now does not mean you're going to abandon your ideals. It means you're going to fight harder for them. So don't let old people's cynicism, don't let old people's who have given up on their ideals drag you down to where they are. You don't deserve it. And they don't deserve it. But you don't deserve it. Be idealistic. Stand up for your ideals. Live them. Don't support people that don't live up to your ideals. Your ideals are yours. They're your standards. They're not his. They're not anybody else's. They're yours. It's your integrity. We'll talk about integrity in one of the future shows, right? It's your integrity at stake. It's your life, it's your morality at stake. Too many people, because, oh, you know, the world is not perfect, give up on their ideals. And when they give up on their ideals, they, they lose. They are the losers. They become cynical, they become bitter, they become angry. I mean, look at, look at voters right now. Who's happy? Democrats are not happy, Republicans are not happy. Nobody's happy. Because they're just a bunch of cynics who've middle of the road nothings who've given up on everything, or who are driven by hate. Take the you know far left, just driven by hate, hate of everything. You don't want to become any of that. You live to your ideas. You're looking for the Howard Rock and John Galtz of the world, and if they're not there, then you'll keep looking, and you'll hold them as an ideal forever, and you will strive to make yourself as close to them as you possibly can. That's what it's about. But the people who give up will always want to drag you down into the sewer with them. All right, I worry the almost immeasurable bounty bestowed upon society by capitalism may ultimately be its downfall. People who would have otherwise not survived have been able to procreate and propagate their ideas, thoughts, I'm calming myself down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Before capitalism, people had worse ideas than they have today. Before capitalism, we had religious fanaticism of all kinds and all variations where people slaughtering each other and murdering each other over religion. We had the worst kind of superstitions of witches and we had an attitude of torturing people in public was entertainment, taking out their, in, their, you know, their internal organs with a, with a live audience, cheering it on. That was entertainment. This is pre-capitalism. No, the world is so much better today. Even our ideas so far are better. We don't do stuff like that. We don't have witch trials. We, you know, we have other kind of trials. We don't, we still have respect. And as long as we can keep capitalism going, even somewhat, yeah, we have cancer culture, but cancer culture is not witch hunts. It's not putting the witch in the pool and saying, well, if you drown, you must have been guilty. And it, no, if you drown, you must have been innocent. If you don't drown, we'll have to drown you because that's what we do to witches. I mean, really. I mean, 
cancel culture, I don't have a problem with cancel culture in the sense that people don't like what I say. They shouldn't, they, it's fine for them to cancel me. Don't listen to me if you don't like what I say. Cancel me, please. I mean, not if you don't like what I say. If you find my, what I say offensive, don't listen to me. That's called canceling. So let's not blow these things out of proportion. Cancel culture is, why is that a big deal? As compared to house arrest, burning at the stake, which is what cancel culture was in previous centuries. Now, we will head back into those dark ages, but we will head back into them when we give up on capitalism. So it's not capitalism's fault in any way, in any way. Bad ideas have always been around. Bad ideas have always existed. The closest we come to getting rid of those bad ideas is... During the rise of capitalism. Now, it's the ideas that led to the rise of capitalism. But it's not capitalism that turned the world into bad ideas. And, and don't be such a determinist. It's not genes that dictate the ideas that people have. It's not genes that make them what they are. You have choices. Everybody has choices. Even people whose genes you don't like have choices. And they can choose good ideas or choose bad ideas. The reason, the reason bad ideas are winning is because those of us who have good ideas are not loud enough, are not passionate enough, are not engaged enough, are not consistent enough. We'd, we'd rather fight with each other than go out there and get the world. We'd rather... We'd rather fit in than actually fight for what we believe. But the system, this system of freedom, the system of capitalism, to the extent that it even still exists, is not f creating the bad ideas. It is the only thing standing between us and the dominance of the bad ideas and the overtaking of the bad ideas. So the progress that we're making, we're making in spite of all the bad stuff that's happening in the world and because of the little freedom that we have. Freedom, even when it's just a little bit, results in amazing outcomes, amazing outcomes. And we're living it right now. What we need today what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, 
uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.